I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. So you want to get into reef tanks? I understand where you're coming from. The first time I walked into my local fish store and said that I wanted to buy some coral for my reef tank, they asked me, do you want soft corals, LPS, SPS? What are you looking for? I looked at them with the deer in the headlights looked because I had no idea what they're talking about. If all those terms sound foreign to you, not a problem. I'll make it really easy for you. A coral may look like a plant and it's actually an invertebrate. Corals get the majority of their energy from a symbiotic relationship with zooxanthellae inside their cells. Therefore, the vast majority of corals need light to grow, which makes them photosynthetic. There are some non-photosynthetic corals and those aren't for newbies, so don't worry about them for now. I like to keep things simple, so coral can be broken down into two different types, hard corals and soft corals. Soft corals are the easiest coral to keep. Very forgiving, yet still very pretty. Soft corals can be made up of one polyp or many polyps. One type of soft coral zoanthids were my first love when it comes to corals, and I still love them today. They come in all different types of colors, they're very easy keepers, and they multiply very easily. Soft corals don't lay down a hard skeleton like hard corals, which is why they're called soft corals. That means they aren't as picky when it comes to water chemistry, and they don't need to pull certain elements like calcium from your tank's water column. If you want a low maintenance reef tank, a soft coral tank is the way to go. While we're on the topic of soft corals, here's a pro tip. Pro tip, Xenia is a very tempting soft coral as it pulses and sways in the current of your tank. It can also grow very quickly and take over your tank. I recommend you avoid Xenia unless you're 100% positive you want a Xenia tank and nothing else. Pro tip number two, green star polyps. Looks like grass, grows like a weed and nearly impossible to remove from the rocks in your tank. If you want to put it in your tank, isolate it on its own rock. You don't want it growing onto other rocks in your tank. The second type of coral is hard coral, and it's called hard coral because they lay down a hard base for themselves like this one. See, on this coral skeleton, you still have coral polyps, and as the polyps grew, they lay down calcium carbonate to make this skeleton, hence the name hard corals. Now, corals need certain things out of your tank's water to build this calcium carbonate skeleton, which as a general rule, hard corals have more intense needs than soft corals. I'm gonna talk about those needs in a minute. For now, know that if you're looking at a coral and it has a hard base like this, you can see some kind of skeleton structure, you're looking at a hard coral. Hard corals can be broken down into two categories, LPS, SPS. LPS stands for large polyp stony coral. Large polyp as the individual polyps are, well, large. Here's an LPS coral in my tank and each of these guys is a polyp. Underneath all that flesh is a hard skeleton, which is why it's called a stony coral. Here are other examples of LPS corals. Contrast this LPS coral with this SPS or small polyp stony coral. The SPS coral has small polyps. Sometimes they're so small you can hardly see them. Underneath all that color is still a hard skeleton. Affectionately referred to as sticks by reefers, SPS are easily fragged and traded or sold. They come in all different shapes and colors to create a splash of color in your reef tank. A general rule of thumb for hard corals is that they need stronger lighting, more water flow inside your tank, and better water chemistry. That means more gear and time on your part. That doesn't mean a lot of time and a lot of money, and part of the series is me walking through what's needed, and more importantly, what's not needed so you don't waste your time and money. With any of these types of corals, there's nothing to keep you from having both types in your tank. Now, a reef tank with both soft corals and hard corals is called a mixed reef tank, which is what you're looking at here. I've got soft corals, I've got hard corals, and they're mixed up all over my tank. Here's a fun pro tip about mixed reef tanks. Pro tip, if you can keep hard corals alive, it's very likely your soft corals will be happy too. That means in a mixed reef tank, you can focus on the needs of your hard corals and your soft corals will just tag along for the ride. What about sea anemones? Aren't those included in reef tanks? 
seen enemies can be kept in reef tanks, and as a newbie, keep them on your wish list. They have more intense needs than corals, so get your feet wet with corals, and then move on to seen enemies. I'll cover seen enemies in a later episode. As you're building your coral collection, a great place to find corals is LiveAquaria.com. They have a wide selection of corals, including corals for beginners and aquaculture corals. Everything you're seeing on your screen can be found at Live Aquaria. Starting with soft corals is a great way to transition into reef tanks. I started with just zoanthids, and I got a lot of enjoyment from it, and I still get enjoyment from them today. Don't let anyone give you a hard time because you keep a soft coral tank. Nothing wrong with soft corals, and there's nothing wrong with hard corals either. You can always add in hard corals if you want, or if you're a hard coral person and you want to go back to soft corals, nothing wrong with that either. At the end of the day, we're all in this hobby together to build beautiful tanks and to enjoy our creations. I'm Mark Callan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.